do this for every cycle of easy hard gates. Finally, uh, we combine all single qubit gates into a new easy gate cycle. And this is what we, this is what we call our randomly compiled circuit. There are a couple things to notice about these, um, these circuits. Firstly, um, comparing the first and the last circuit, uh, they have the same circuit depth. So uh, when we perform randomized compiling, we are not increasing the circuit depth at all. Also, they are logically equivalent because every gate that we've inserted, we've subsequently undone in the next cycle. Um, and classically, it's, it's very easy to perform randomized compiling on a single bare circuit n different times, many different times before runtime. So the workflow looks something like this. You take a bare circuit that you want to measure little n times. You classically uh, perform RC large n times to produce that many different variants of this circuit. Individually, you upload and measure each of these circuits. Um, this step is, uh, uh, it will scale as the number of circuits that you want to measure. Um, however, the measurement step itself is reduced by that same factor because we want to normalize statistics between the bare circuit and all of the RC circuits. Finally, at the end, you take the individual measured uh, probability distributions and you combine them into a single probability distribution. So uh, the, the combined result of many RC circuits, hopefully, is that the total error of a circuit is reduced. And I'll outline how and why that can, that can occur. Um, and this occurs because we are tailoring coherent errors into stochastic errors. So to understand this last point, um, consider a schematic here shown of a single qubit state on the block sphere. This qubit state could be after a sequence of gates applied to a single qubit, um, but before measurement. Um, so in the ideal case, shown here in black, we have a vector on the block sphere. When we, when we measure this, we get a distribution of zeros and ones. However, if our circuit contains coherent errors, we may actually end up in a distinct state. And so when we measure this blue vector, we get a different distribution of zero and ones. What we're doing with randomized compiling is we're essentially taking a different trajectory to the same final state for each RC circuit. So one RC circuit may end up here, another one may end up here and here and here, and we can do this many times. And when we combine all the results, hopefully we get a vector represented by all these results that is a better representation of this ideal state. So when we measure this orange vector here, hopefully we get a more accurate representation of zero and ones. And in fact, we, um, um, we performed a single qubit state tomography to demonstrate this fact. So um, this is after 10 gates. We have a, a cycle of 200 gates, uh, a sequence of 200 gates, and this is after 10 gates. And we can see both the RC and bear and the ideal vectors there as well are all co-lined uh, along the uh, Bloxford pole. And here we see basically no benefit, and, you know, there's, there's not much coherent error. But as the circuit progresses and more coherent error has a chance to build up, we can see um, a distinct separation between here the bear, the bear circuit in blue, the uh, ideal state after 100 gates in black, and then the RC state, uh, uh, which is represented by the combined distribution of all these different RC points on the block sphere. Um, a couple things to note is that one, the RC vector is much more co-aligned with the ideal state. And also, um, there is a reduction in the length of this block vector because we're tailoring this co these coherent errors into stochastic errors. So it, it, on average, leads to decoherence. However, it is much more co-aligned with the ideal state. And at the end of the circuit, um, we have a deterministic result um, in that we're a superposition along the block sphere. But still, uh, the RC vector is much more co-aligned with the ideal state than the bare vector. Now, how do we benchmark RC? Well, we use a metric known as the total variational distance. Um, and this uh, metric simply measures the difference between two probability distributions. So we have an ideal distribution here, and we have a, a measured distribution here. Um, this sum is over bit strings x and a, and a total possible set of large x. If you're not familiar with this term, or I should say, uh, before I say that, um, uh, the TVD is bounded by 0 and 1 where zero means these two distributions are identical, and one means that there's no overlap. So if you want a circuit to, to perform well, you want a low TVD. Um, if you're not familiar with this metric, it's useful to think of it as simply the probability of measuring the incorrect solution. So when it is one, you will always measure the incorrect bit stream, but when it's zero, you'll always measure the correct bit stream. As an example, um, take uh, this, this um, two qubit state here, which is, uh, uh, equal distribution of 0, 0, and 1, 1, 
well, say we actually try and measure this, measure this in the lab and we take a thousand shots and we get mostly zero, zero and mostly one, one, but a little bit of these other um, uh, results. Well, when we compute the TBD, what this is telling us is that we have a 7.1% chance of measuring the incorrect bitstream. Um, I think most of you are familiar with our, our circuit layout now. Um, here we performed experiments on uh, four nearest near neighbor qubits. Um, and uh, we performed randomized benchmarking on each of these qubits and on the two qubit gates between them to uh, give us a value of average gate infidelity. And we also performed unitary or extended randomized benchmarking, which gives us a measure of the infidelity due to coherent error in the circuit. So uh, when we combine these two results, we get a measure known as incoherence. And this is simply the fraction of the total error rate that is due to incoherent error. Um, when this is zero, all of the error is unitary, and when it's one, all of the error is depolarizing ones. Uh, so um, we performed uh, RB and XRB on these uh, four qubits using only single qubit gates here. Um, and we see uh, when we perform these uh, benchmarking experiments independently on each qubit, we get an error rate and a measure of the incoherence. And because this incoherence here is close to one, this tells us that uh, on isolated single qubit gates, all the errors are mostly uh, incoherent errors. However, when we perform simultaneous RB, whoops, let me back up real quick. When we perform simultaneous RB and XRB, we see, we see that we have an increase in the error rate and a decrease in the incoherence, telling us that there is incoherent, or there's coherent error in our system. And in fact, the co co coherent error accounts for more than half of all of the errors in these gates. So what we did is, um, um, we performed a sequence of experiments on random circuits. Here we have on the x-axis uh, circuit depth as measured by the number of cycles of a Clifford gate and a non-Clifford gate. These are just single qubit gates. Um, and here on the y-axis, we have the probability of the incorrect solution or the TBD. And we see that um, as the circuit depth increases, the probability of measuring the incorrect solution goes up. However, across all of these circuit depths, randomized compiling reduces this. And so what this is telling us is that under randomized compiling, we can perform circuits of longer circuit depths under the same infidelity error budget. Um, notice here that I have four different circuit depths. And so on this next slide, I have reanalyzed the results from each circuit depth here labeled uh, top each of these plots. And I reanalyzed them in terms of uh, the number of random compilations or the number of RC circuits. Um, uh, briefly, I should mention, for each of these circuit depths, I generated 100 random circuits. Um, uh, these are given in the semi-transparent data points. And then these are just random, uh, or sorry, these are the average values here in bold. And for each random circuit, I generated 20 RC circuits. So uh, what we see here, uh, as a function of the number of RC circuits, we can kind of see that the, the convergence of the TBD. And what we see is that for all these different circuit depths, we actually only needed roughly five to 10 circuits on average to converge to an optimal result. And so what this is telling us is that we don't actually need that many circuits to see a benefit from this protocol. This is good for people who want to use it without the added expense of running more circuits on your quantum computer. So just in conclusion, um, uh, we have shown experimental verification of randomized compiling in our, in our supercomputing transbond qubits. Um, RC works by tailoring coherent errors into stochastic Pauli noise. Um, it performed better than, than bare circuits for all circuit depths tested and requires few randomizations in order to improve algorithm accuracy. Um, in general, noise tailoring is a really powerful technique because it, it improves circuit predictability by getting rid of these coherent errors and subsequently allowing us to perform longer depth circuits. Um, I, I think randomized compiling is a really powerful tool because it can be used on any hardware today, uh, regardless of the level of error correction that someone is implementing. Uh, and I think it, I really do think it's going to continue to be useful beyond the NISC era as well. Uh, if you're interested in this topic, we have an upcoming publication, not yet on the archive, but we, we demonstrate random circuit sampling results on multi-qubit circuits, as well as um, how RC can help improve known quantum algorithms. Uh, and thank you for your time.